Lord, I just thank you for this opportunity to serve you, Lord. I just thank you for technology, Lord. We just thank you for social media and just media in general, Lord. We just thank you that the enemy does not create anything, that you are a creator, and we just give you glory for this, Lord. And we just thank you that it is reconciled. We reconciled every cable, um, every piece of technology, um, every bit of data, Lord. We, we reconcile it to you under the blood of Jesus, and we just thank you, Lord. We give you glory, and we just ask that my words, John's words, um, would be yours. Lord, we give you glory, and we yield this time over to you and we just release um your angels and we just ask lord that you would release them um into literally into the the homes and into the space um that is occupied by the listeners and the viewers that your presence would be felt or that they would minister your presence and minister healing and freedom and and minister a hunger in their hearts for you jesus and we just thank you, Lord, for this time. Um, we are your servants, Lord. We're your sons. And we are just we are just honored to serve you and to be part of what you are doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Daniel. I want to start off, too, with just saying on my run this morning, I've been in some pain in my ankle. And this is very important for everyone to understand because Dr. Daniel Colasso, when we ran our 100 miler, prayed over me about mile 18 or 19, where I didn't think I could go another step. And I want everyone to understand that the power of prayer is so real. It's so powerful. And I just, if you have not been a part of that experience of a true, powerful prayer, anointing, healing, then I just recommend that you go to church or go to somebody who just pray for you. And I was blessed in my life to have that opportunity with Dan where I've never was prayed over like that. And when I was in pain this morning, I actually asked Jesus. I said, Jesus, by your precious blood, heal me. And I actually thought of Dan and of how he has the anointing of healing. And I wanted to talk to him tonight and just at the end maybe we'll after this podcast to master healing as well. So Lord, everything mm. we do, we do it in your name. Yes. And we give you glory. And thank you for following us on the fifty two verses every dad should know. We are trying to get better uh at giving you the information of the verse, the observation, the application, and then praying at the end. And again, I truly hope and Dan and I really do hope that you enjoy these you meditate on the word maybe go back to the the verse and repeat it throughout the week and just let the holy spirit work upon your your spirit i mean just truly work upon your spirit so with that being said again subscribe share and continue to spread the good news so dr Galasso, today is your day we are on week six already where you will begin with the verse Second Peter three eighteen. Yeah, so Second Peter three eighteen it says, "But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and forever." And the observation in the book that we're going through says it very clearly. When it comes to faith or your faith, God doesn't intend for you to stand still. He wants you to keep moving and growing. In fact, God's plan for you includes a lifetime of prayer, praise, and spiritual growth. Many of life's most important lessons are painful to learn. During times of heartbreak and hardship, we must be courageous, and we must be patient, knowing that in his own time, God will heal us if we invite him into our hearts. Spiritual growth need not take place only in times of adversity. We must seek to grow in our knowledge and love of the Lord every day that we live. In those quiet moments, when we are open hearts to God. The one who made us keeps remaking us. 
He gives us direction, perspective, wisdom, and courage. The appropriate moment to accept those spiritual gifts is the present one. Are you as mature as you're going to ever be? Hopefully not. When it comes to your faith, God doesn't intend for you to become fully grown, at least not in this lifetime. In fact, God still has important lessons that he intends to teach you. So ask yourself this. What lesson is God trying to teach me today? And then go about the business of learning it. And that was good, Dan. What did you gather yeah. from that observation of the scripture today? Um, so I love the observation. It's um, It kind of hits all these key points. I, I love especially the part about um, never being fully grown, continuing to feed our faith and have childlike faith. Um, some of the most spiritually mature people that I know that live just a powerful life of servanthood, but, but like have the authority of God on their life. Um, some of them are, no matter how old they are, but some I can think of are, are probably 70, you know, I've met a few that are older and they're just so childlike in their faith. Um, it's, it's really a, a cool thing. Um, so when I read this verse and, um, kind of even before I read the observation, just meditated on the verse for a few moments, um, I just kind of received just how critical it is to grow in the grace of the Lord. Um, a lot of times I, I feel that we recognize grace for salvation um, that maybe brings us into the kingdom, that assures us heaven one day, but we don't realize that grace is present in our life upon salvation and then every day uh, growing and growing and growing. And that grace itself is, and I'm going to, for lack uh, of a better term, use the word energy. I don't mean to sound new agey there, but um, an energy, like it empowers us, um, one, to be saved. It empowers us to grow in the Lord. It empowers us to do the impossible through through the power of the Holy Spirit. So there's grace evident in our life. Um, in every trial, um, in every victory, it's because grace um, was there. And it's just so critical to recognize God's grace in, in every arena of our life. Um, and knowing God, the knowledge of the Lord is so important um, because it's not just knowledge. I mean, we have to understand it's not just knowing about him. I mean, we, we need to, and that should lead to something that should lead to encounter. But knowing the Lord, um, if, we, if we talk about what that meant back in the day, um, knowing was an intimate term, like a husband knew his wife. Um, there was an intimacy there and a union, and the union uh, brought about a conception. So there's fruitfulness from the union of us knowing the Lord and becoming one. And, um, you know, it seems like such a, um, I don't want to say basic, but, you know, you know, it's just kind of an instruction. Continue to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord. But it is such a deep thing, these two things, knowing Him and grace, and they're paired together um, beautifully. So well put, man. And I love how you use these analogies of a man and a woman having fullness, fruitfulness, a union of, of knowing. And what's so beautiful about this is I really didn't know what grace was still more recently, uh, especially when my grandma passed away almost a year ago. Hmm. And it's actually her birthday this month. Uh, so when she passed, or right before she passed, I, I had tattooed on me, and her handwriting, it says, delivered by grace. And what that shows all of us is that if you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you know that he died for all of us, all of us, then you know you are delivered by his grace. And by yeah. God's grace to send his only begotten son to this earth 
to be the sacrificial lamb to spill yeah. his blood on our behalf so that we may have unity with him in divinity. You knew that and what Dan said too of this knowledge. Surely that's what it comes it's what it boils down to, right? And grow in grace and knowledge. That's the first line, right? So if we could just focus on that line, growing in grace, in the grace, not grace, in the grace, yeah, God's grace, which is God's love, his submission, his persistent pursuit to stop down Satan on behalf of our, all of us. And that knowledge, which goes so deep, but there's so much that we can mature as Christians. As we as we get older, like it said in the observation, but there's one thing we have to always understand: that His ways are higher than our ways, right? But that's a part of being human: is that we have to trust God, and that's for that part of faith and hope in Him, in the mission that He came down so beautifully, the greatest love story ever, so that you and I. Dr. Daniel, our families, <laughs> and everyone who just accepts Jesus as the Lord and Savior, is saved. But I, I'll be honest, this verse is something that I have not really meditated on or have read in a while. And there's, it's so rich. It is so rich. And the last thing before I, I let you do the application is the last line. It's not about you. To him yeah. be the glory, now and forever. To him, he goes back to, to his will, not your will. So once we understand that peace as well, upon grace and his glory, just humility, knowing that your lack of pride, and the opposite of that is obedience and submitting that humbleness is a gentle servant of our lord and savior so yeah, this verse is so good dan i, I, mm. I kept rereading it and i was like this gets better and better every time i read it it's just right it's so deep it's so unassuming so at first read right and you can almost gloss over it and go okay yeah you know it's like instruction yeah growing grace and sure but yeah when you stop and you meditate on it and you really like pick it apart i mean it is so deep so go ahead in, in the book and read the tip, or in this case, the application. Yeah. So no matter what your level of spiritual maturity, you can always grow. Show your children the way to know God better. Daily devotions, prayer, worship, and witnessing. That's good. Pretty straightforward, huh? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean... Again, this goes back to application as fathers, right? So yeah. our duty as the man of the household is to imitate and emulate Christ in our household. It says it very specifically. Show your children how, devotions, which we're doing, prayer, which we did at the beginning, and we'll end here shortly, worship, you know, whether that's at church or on your own, and witnessing. And I, I don't know, I feel like the calling of for you to talk maybe about witnessing in your life uh, or worship that has impacted you. <clears throat> yeah. Um as far as as far as witness goes, whether you intentionally witness or not, you have a witness. And your witness is either one of power, of, of loyalty, of faithfulness, of love, of mercy, or it's something else. Um, and, you know, as husbands and fathers, like we are, we are books that are being read. Um, no matter we, no matter how hard we may have tried to keep certain chapters of our lives off limits, they show and we communicate them to our children and to our wives. 
um, and to make sure that we are yielded over to the Holy Spirit to search out the deep innermost parts of our hearts and our beings and literally lay up daily on that operating table and say, Lord, search me, find in me any wicked way, right? Find in, in me anything that, that I may be doing that I may not, I or, or man may not even deem as bad, but that is short of, of you, Jesus, and, and do away with it, undo it. And it's just so critical that we do that as husbands and, and as fathers. And as far as worship goes, you know, it's the same thing. Like everything we do is worship. Um, so we need to kind of keep that in, in, in perspective. Like sometimes we think we go to church and we worship, or maybe we'll get together and we worship with our children before they go to bed. And that's worship. But everything we do is worship. So, and I'm like, as I, as I'm saying this, I'm like, oh man, I'm convicting myself right now by saying it, but like, and that's okay. You know, it's not hypocritical. That's just transparent. But like everything we do is worship. So if I were to go to this holy place of the altar at church, would I be doing and going up there and saying the things I say at work or say about the person who upsets me, you know what I mean? Throughout my day or whatever, like it's all worship. So I think, you know, we, we say that I say these things and I don't say, you know, everything you do is witness. Everything you do is worship. So be careful. Like we need to walk around in fear, but we walk around with the, with knowing the opportunity that God is giving us to grow and, and, and taking responsibility in the authority that he's given us, that everything we do is worship. Everything we do, we have the opportunity to 100% of our day worship the Lord, to 100% of our day witness to whomever, definitely our wives, definitely our children, our coworkers, our friends, strangers. I mean, we're given this great responsibility and this great opportunity. So, um, I mean, that's just a little bit, maybe a little more than, than you planned to, for me to say. Oh, man, that's <laughs> good. Yeah. No, no. I, you, I think what I, want everyone to understand that going through this is bringing part of the transparency of our lives to these scriptures and how they how they really work in our daily operations yeah family community at work and that's really where i want my prayer for all of us to go so we'll end with our prayer to kind of guide us for how to live the best we can according to the good news yeah lord heavenly father i just want to thank you for having us here today for utilizing this space to share the good news to meditate on your word it's so pure it's so true in a world that's so dark full of lies lust and other deceptions let's go back to the root Word and flesh, you came down to guide us on a straight and narrow path. We can and should imitators of you, Christ, all areas of our life, to not be hypocrites, to be authentic Christians, all of our daily operations. It's not perfect, for only you are perfect. To live a life with values, morals, and to live out the truth within the book. We also give glory to you in every single thing that we do and not take for granted anything that you have placed in our lives. And also to remember that when we face trials or tribulations or a separation for something that we feel is in this need for us, that we humbly submit to your will and have faith that you will see us through the valley into the other side of paradise and that we continue to be good stewards of your love, showcase who you are, everybody, love, joy, and peace. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. The sixth week already. And I will say this to close. I highly recommend that you just get in a routine of pushing play when you have this subscribed on your podcast player, whatever that is, and that you join us and comment and maybe add anything that you feel value to help the audience grow in their faith and love from their journey on this earth to eternity with their Lord and Savior. Anything else, Daniel? Hey, God bless you all. Amen. God bless. We'll see you here in a week.